In the equation, 8 times y plus 7 is equal to 12 times y minus 9, we must figure out what the value of y is so that it will satisfy our equation. In order to do this, we must isolate the y variable to see what its value is. The first thing we are going to do is combine like terms in this equation. Because 12 and 8 both have the variable of y raised to the exact same power, we would say that those are like terms, so we are going to combine those. We can combine them by moving the 8y over to the right-hand side of the equation or the 12y to the left-hand side of the equation. In this example, we are going to get rid of the 8y on the left side and move it over to the right side. The opposite of positive 8y is minus 8y. So that will get rid of it on the left-hand side of the equation, but we must move it over to the right-hand side of the equation to balance our equation. 12y and negative 8y leaves us with positive 4y. On the left-hand side, we still have a number 7, so we're going to drop that number 7 down. Now we must simplify the equation. 7 is equal to 4y minus 9. Now we are going to combine the 7 and the negative 9 because those are like terms. The opposite of minus 9 is plus 9. That will cancel itself out on the right side, but to balance our equation, we're going to move positive 9 on the left-hand side of the equation. 7 plus 9 gives us 16. So now we have the equation 16 is equal to 4y. Now at this point, most of us can simply look at this equation and figure out that y must be 4 because 4 times 4 would equal 16. We know because 4 and y are being multiplied, we do the opposite, which is to divide. So by dividing 4y by 4, that will leave us with exactly 1y on the right-hand side of the equation. But what we do to one side, we must do to the other side. So when we take 16 and divide that by 4, that leaves us with 4 on the left side. So now the y is isolated, and it reads 4 is equal to y, or we could read it as y is equal to 4. In the equation, 2 times a plus 3 times the quantity 4 take away a is equal to negative 6, we must isolate the a variable to find its value. In order to do this, we will have to use the distributive property as well as combine like terms to find our answer. You must always use the distributive property before combining like terms when simplifying your equation. So the first thing we're going to do is distribute the number 3 to every term inside the parentheses. So when we do this, we're going to take positive 3 times positive 4, which gives us the term positive 12. And then we're going to multiply positive 3 times negative 1a, which gives us a product of negative 3a. Now we have the equation 2 times a plus 12 minus 3 times a is equal to negative 6. Now that we have used the distributive property and we can't use it anywhere else in this equation, we must combine like terms to simplify our equation even further. When combining 2a and negative 3a, that leaves us with the sum of negative 1a. Now we must combine the terms positive 12 and negative 6. Because they are on opposite sides of the equal sign, we must send one of the terms to the other side. So to send positive 12 on the right-hand side of our equation, we do the opposite of adding 12, which is to take away 12. That will cancel itself out on the left-hand side of the equation, and then we send it to the right-hand side of the equation. The sum of negative 6 and negative 12 is negative 18. So now our simplified equation reads as negative 1a is equal to negative 18. We must get rid of the negative 1, so we have a positive a all by itself. Negative 1a divided by negative 1 gives us just positive a. And to balance our equation, we must divide negative 18 by negative 1, which gives us a quotient of positive 18. Now that the a is all by itself and positive, we would say that our answer is a is equal to 18. In the equation, 1 sixth x minus 1 third is equivalent to 10 twelfths x plus 1, we must make sure to isolate the x variable so we can figure out what its value is. 
There are a few different ways that we can begin this problem, but we shall begin by combining the negative one-third with positive one on the opposite side of the equal sign. Before combining like terms, we must make sure that both terms are located on the same side of the equal sign. And we can move negative one-third to the right-hand side of the equal sign by doing the opposite operation right below. The opposite of negative one-third is positive one-third. That will cancel itself out on the left, but we balance our equation by writing the same thing out on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Mentally, we should be able to add one whole and one-third together, and that would simply be positive one and one-third. So we just write a plus sign right in front of one and one-third. Now we have the equation one-sixth times x is equal to ten-twelfths times x plus one and one-third. Next, we shall combine our x terms together, but first we must make sure they are on the same side of the equal sign. So now what we must do is combine one-sixth x and negative ten-twelfths x together. Before doing so, we have to make sure we have a common denominator. So we are going to turn one-sixth x into two-twelfths x. Now we can add the two values together. Because one term is positive and the other is negative, we actually have to subtract the two numbers together, which leaves us with eight twelfths. But our sign is negative because we have to use the sign of the larger absolute value. Now we have the equation negative eight twelfths times x is equal to one and one third. To isolate the x variable in this case, we have to do the opposite of multiplying negative eight twelfths and x, which is to divide by negative eight twelfths. Doing that on the left-hand side, that will cancel out the negative eight twelfths, and on the right-hand side, we have to take positive one and one-third and divide that by negative eight twelfths. To do this, we are going to take one and one-third and rename that as an improper fraction, which is four-thirds. And then what we do is multiply the reciprocal of negative eight twelfths, which is negative twelve eighths. Now that our problem is set up, we are going to perform any cancellation possible so we can get an answer in a simplified format. We have a four on the top and an eight on the bottom, so we can reduce four over eight as one over two or one half. Twelve and three can be canceled out as well because they share a common factor of three. Three goes into twelve four times, so we cancel the twelve and turn that into a four. The three goes into itself once, so we turn that into the number one. Now we still have a four at the top and a two at the bottom, and those two numbers can be canceled out even further to be two over one. The next thing that we do is we multiply the numerators left over and the denominators left over. One times two is two, so our numerator is two, and for the denominator, one times one is one. Because one of the two terms in the multiplication problem were negative, our answer is negative. And negative two over one can be simplified to negative two, which gives us a final answer of x is equal to negative two.